Hello, everybody, and welcome to our presentation today, which is uh, uh, titled Thrift Shopping in the Kevin Foe's Bag of Tricks. So thrift shopping, what are we talking about? Well, thrift shopping is like reusing something that's been used before when you go to a thrift shop and you buy a piece of clothing that's already been used. Well, we are offering you use, used pieces of clothing, but in our uh, practices here at the Kevin Faux. So um, first of all, let me present myself. I am Daniel Dubé. I have been with the Kevin Faux for 15 years already. Uh, I am an educational consultant and I am also the uh, Brightspace administrator and the Google Workspace administrator. So you have my contact info there and my colleague, Judith Hoffman, who will present herself when is her time to uh, to present what the Kevin Fo he is? So, uh, what's in store today in our thrift shop? Well, today we will talk about what is the Kevin Fo, and then we will present to you uh, three used pieces that you can use in your uh, practices. Uh, the first one we'll talk about release conditions. The second will be about widgets, and the third one will be about LTI integrations and how we make them, use them to make our courses better. So without further ado, I will pass the baton to Judith. Bonjour, merci Dan. Hi, my name is Judith Hoffman. I am uh, one of the vice principals at Cavelfo. I have been working here for four years. I, um, I am responsible for summer courses, adult learning and um, uh, permanent education for high school stu students throughout the province. So what is Cavelfo? We are called Consortium d'apprentissage virtuel de langue française de l'Ontario. Founded in 2010, we are designated by Ontario's 12 French language school boards and the Ministry of Education to offer online courses to stud students registered throughout their high schools and throughout the province. Since 2021, Two, two online credits are required for Ontario's high school diploma. Our courses are asynchronous and are included in the students' regular timetables at their school of origin. On a yearly basis, we offer over 100 different courses in all subject areas. Our team includes 34 teachers, 14 administrative and support staff that are spread out throughout the province. In 2020, we were awarded the D2L Excellence Award. What is the Cabin Faux? The Cabin Faux is considered to be the reference in French language online learning. Our mandates include, we offer day and summer asynchronous online courses. We offer guidance and support to Ontario French language schools. We offer support to students with special needs. We offer specialized training in an asynchronous online education context. We establish provincial and national partnerships. We offer adult education referral services in collaboration with our, our partners throughout the province. And we are innovators in virtual learning. We also coordinate the creative design process of the new courses and the revision of French language online courses in Ontario. A few statistics. In 22-23, a total of 4,001 students completed their courses and 640 of those were students with special needs. From 2010 to 2022, our student success rate is, was 98% and 97% for stu students with special needs. Our retention rate is 93%. For summer courses, our success rate is 96% over the same period of time. In 2010-2011, we had 16 teachers and offered 67 different courses. Almost 10 years later, we had 34 teachers and offered 105 different courses. In our province, we have 105 French language high schools. As already mentioned before, we received the D2L Excellence Award in 2020. 
you will also receive the link for the presentation of the slides that we were um, we handed out in 2020. Back to you, Dan. Thank you, Judith. So our first item up for sale in our thrift store today is release conditions. So how do we use release conditions to make our job e easier here at the Kevin Four? Well, first of all, release conditions allow teachers to automatically make something appear in the course when one or a few specific conditions are met. So this price space feature is used by our teachers as a way to add content that is not yet available to students for different reasons, send automated messages using intelligent agents, or add a widget to a homepage to share documents and videos. So with the increasing amount of students in our courses, automation uh, reduces the amount of marking, feedback, and communication, allowing for more time to complete other tasks. So shifting to a course, we are here in a grade 12 biology course. Now you will notice most of the, uh, the text in these courses are in French since we offer courses in French language education. So, uh, but I've modified uh, the language of the LMS for uh, the presentation purposes and also some of the text inside the course so you can easily see what we, we are trying to do here in, uh, in, in this course particularly. So I'll show you two different, uh, two different uses of release conditions here in this biology course. And the first one is to add content that is not yet available for students. So if I go to this subject here, which is called macromolecule, um, so you have here the uh, the symbol for release conditions that are that are added to the subject. So I will click and see what the subject shows. So this is something that is not yet available for students, and students have to perform uh, a task which will allow them to see this in the course content after. So uh, this is uh, a series of answer keys that are made available to students after they add something to this specific Dropbox. So when a student adds this to the Dropbox, this new subject will appear in his course content. I am now impersonating student uh, 11 site or student five here and i will show you this student has added in his dropbox in this dropbox one file so in his course content now he now sees the answer keys this subject here which was not available to him in the beginning so adding something to the dropbox made this subject matter here this uh this area available for students so this is one way to easily uh share something new with the student when he performs the, a specific task the second way this teacher shares new content with a student is by using intelligent agents so i will uh, access intelligent agents through the, uh, the edit course um, icon. And you, as you see, we have an intelligent agent here named M1.2 answer key for uh, the, the, the subject water. So I will show you what this uh, intelligent agent looks like and why, why it works well to share new content with students. So, um basically here you have all the uh the different uh, scheduling uh the criteria it's a student etc etc and then the condition that's added to the intelligent agent here is to submit a dropbox uh, to dropbox folder this one here format sif low so when the student adds a file to that to this an email will be sent to him saying thanks for submitting the assignment named water you will see that a new page now appears in your course content where you will find the answer key for this task check and compare your answers and if you need extra help please schedule a google meet using the reservation calendar so and then the teacher adds his emoji his bitmoji here so 
this student has already added um, a, a, a file to this specific Dropbox. If I go here, one user identified, I, I ran the uh, intelligent agent, and he has received the email saying that the new content now appears in his course. And if we go into the course content, this new subject will now appear because the student has uh, performed this task. The third way our teachers use release conditions is through widgets. So you see on this homepage of this math, math course, you have a series of widgets here on the right-hand side attached to release conditions. And you can see this icon here shows that there are release conditions for this these widgets. So um, let's just go and see how teachers add the uh, uh, the release conditions to the widget. In through Edit Widget, you go to Release Conditions, and then you can see that the exist the existing release condition here is to a submission to this Dropbox, which is 1.1 formative assessment. If you Go back to the home page. You can think that this home page is pretty crowded with widgets, but the students really don't see these uh, these widgets until they perform the task that is required to see them. And you can see in, on his home home page that he doesn't see these widgets, so they appear and they are obvious because they are on the home page when the student adds a uh, uh, adds a file to the Dropbox, which I will do here, and I go back to the home page. the student will now see the first widget, which was attached to this condition. So this, is, this makes it very obvious that there is a, an answer key that is added here in the specific area, and the student, every time he goes back to the home page, will see when he uh, adds something to another Dropbox that is attached to a condition in a, in a widget, that he will see new widgets. His home key, his home page will become more and more crowded with these widgets, but they are very obvious to him. Our second item up for grabs in our thrift store today is the use of widgets to customize our home pages. So a lot of our teachers are using interactive images to enhance their home pages, make their more useful. Uh, more inviting, a little bit more, uh, create a little bit more life in their courses. Uh, the service we use is Genially. You have the link here in the presentation. Um, and we have acquired a license for all our staff so they can use all the, uh, the tools, um, features. And so it's very intuitive and it's easy to integrate in our, in, in our widgets. So how to use them? Well, some teachers are creating extra nav bars and I'll show you how they do that and why. Also, uh, they uh, they use it to create course info widgets, or they use it to create gamified paths for units or courses. So let's uh, move on to Genially. So here is the page where you will land when you click on the link that's included in the presentation. And I will show you a few uses of Genially in our courses. So I was talking, first of all, of a different nav bar. So uh, in this biology course here, um, the teacher created this second nav bar, which uh, has extra links that are not, maybe not system links. So compared uh, to the nav bar in this course here, where it's full of different, and uh, on purpose, I added a lot of icons here in this nav bar, but students sometimes don't know that they have to click on this arrow to see the extra icons in the nav bar. So by creating an extra nav bar, you eliminate this extra uh, knowledge that the student has to have to know that the nav bar will, will uh, open up with more icons and you create a second nav bar, you can use different links, and you can also include system links if you want, like uh, content or Dro Dropbox or, uh, or whatever you wish. But this teacher here added a link to his website, to his tracking sheet, to a link to the Google Meet where uh, students click on to, to meet the, the teacher virtually, uh, progress report, et cetera. So you can add this nav bar and it makes it easy for the student to see right when they get on the page that uh, there are extra items he can access through this nav bar. 
In this math course, the teacher added an extra nav bar so you can see the regular nav bar, which has only one level. There's no extra click to, to, to open it up. And then you have this second nav bar with different, uh, different links to different uh, areas where the teachers might, might want the student to, to access. And then this teacher added a course path, a gamified course path for the student. So uh, if the student clicks here on unit one, it will bring, it will open up a second page in this interactive image where you have different links and the student, if the student clicks on this link here, it opens up a page in course content, which is the link that the teacher added to that, that specific clip. A third use of interactive images in uh, in the home page and course widgets is in, in this kinesiology course, where the teacher created a page with uh, information for her course itself. So you have the course syllabus, you have a tracking sheet, you have a progress report, you have here where you can do a uh, Google Meet appointment with a teacher, and then here where you can click Google Meet. So this eliminates also in the uh, the main nav bar, the extra icons that you could add. And then it makes it a lot more interesting as the uh, students see this image where you can click and access uh, different information for the course. Moving along to our third item up for grabs in our thrift store, we will be talking about LTI integrations. So LTI integrations are tools that make our courses better. They are external services to Brightspace, which allow teachers to use tools that are not platform specific. So they are third party and you can integrate them in your platform and it makes it a lot easier to use it in the platform itself. So integrating these tools makes it easier to track student progress by linking the tool to the course class list. Uh, in certain instances, you can also see the, the results. Let's say there's a quiz attached to the activity. You can see the results through a course class list in the LTI integrated tool. So the integration has uh, set up has to be done by the Brightspace administrator. And once the tool is integrated, users can add items using the insert quick link or insert stuff tools in the Brightspace editor. And these, uh, these elements will be created in your, uh, your third party app. And then you will be able to go and pick it and drop it and put it in your course content, in your news, uh, or, or in your uh, uh, wh wherever you want to put it, where there is a Brightspace editor in your course. So I've included the Brightspace LTI integration guide, guide link here. So you can access it, uh, access the uh, Brightspace community information here. The first tool I'm going to show you, which we integrated to our Brightspace environment, is Padlet. So Padlet is an online discussion tool where threads appear as digital notice boards. Basically, it's an online post-it wall, and you can access Padlet's website using uh, cl on by clicking the Padlet logo here on top of the page on, in the presentation. So we have subscribed to a school board wide license, which makes it possible to integrate this tool. Without the, uh, the, uh, the license, it's not possible to, uh, to integrate Padlet to your LMS, but it comes with a lot of advantages. And it's, uh, our license has an unlimited amount, unlimited amount of accounts that are possible. So uh, it's, a, it's a very, useful to have that license. So LTI integration of this tool makes it easy to create and include a wall anywhere in the course without, to ha without having to copy an embed code, which is the way we used to do it before. When a student adds a post to any of the threads, it automatically creates a Padlet account through our license using the student's Brightspace account information and email address, which is included in, in his information. So basically with the unlimited amount of, uh, of accounts and us having always every semester more and more students uh, registered in our courses, 
uh, it's very useful to have that integration into Brightspace. So I have also added the link to uh, Padlet's information on how to integrate to Brightspace. This is a link to a Padlet page, which gives you the details step-by-step -step on how to integrate so for the admins. So I'm gonna show you how to integrate these Padlets in your course. And I'm gonna switch, first of all, to my Padlet dashboard. So you will see uh, in here that I have a bunch of Padlets created and I have created this Padlet here just for the presentation today. So I'm gonna go in this course here, which is an English grade 12 course. And I'm just gonna integrate it here on this page just to show you how it's done. So you go to edit. And then I, I said that you could use either insert stuff. So insert stuff allows you to include the Padlet as you see it on in your account, or you can just insert the quick link, which will just add a link to the Padlet where students click and the Padlet opens in another window. We prefer to in integrate it in the course because it's right there for the student. It doesn't have to go outside and, and do anything else, but just click uh, anywhere in the Padlet and add their answer. So I'm gonna use insert stuff. I'm gonna choose Padlet, which was added in my list of different uh, areas where I can select. So I'll use Padlet and that's through the LTI integration, which is nice. And then I'll find the Padlet that I wanna add. So it's gonna be the last one because it's chronological. So this is the last one I created, which is the one I just showed you. I select it and then it shows you how it look what it looks like in the before you insert it. So I'll, I am just going going to insert it. So now this is the student view of content and I'm going to go to inquiry 1.1. So this is how the student will see the 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 integrated padlet and basically, I'm just going to close this side uh, menu here. Basically, the student can click, answer, and then just publish. No, it's in French because the account's in French, but I'm just going to hit publish. And you can see his answer appears on the screen. So he can answer all the questions, and his answers will be visible by everybody that can access this Padlet, which means all of the students. And if I go back and I go back as a teacher in content at inquiry 1.1, you can see that his answer has automatically already been added to the Padlet and I can see it. So it's live. So the service works where when someone adds a post, it's live and others can see. I'm going to switch back to my presentation because now we're going to talk about the other LTI integrated tool that we have added, which is named Edpuzzle. So for those of you who don't, do not know what Edpuzzle is, Edpuzzle is an online video editing and formative assessment tool. So you can access Edpuzzle by clicking the, uh, the uh, logo up here. There's a link to, the, the, to Edpuzzle's website. So this tool is free of use to teachers and students, up to 20 videos. And there is also a pro license for school. We, do, we have not yet subscribed to the pro license that might come in the future, but you can integrate anyways, even though you don't have the pro license. So Edpuzzle allows teachers to make their videos interactive. Teachers can pause the video and ask questions at specific times. Teachers can also ask or require students to watch the complete video. So if he does not get to the end of the video, well, Edpuzzle is going to let the, the teacher know. Um, so this makes it possible to know if students are watching your videos and if they are paying attention, because you know students can just 
press play on a video and let it go while they're doing something else and then come back and, oh, I've watched it, but they haven't really watched it. So if you ask questions at specific times, then students have to answer at that time before they can move on to the next question. So, and another advantage of integrating Edpuzzle in your, uh, your LMS in Brightspace is that you can see a gradebook with student results that are linked to your class. So that's very important because you want to know if the students understand also if you're if you're teaching a concept a concept through video. So videos can be uploaded from your computer, taken from Google Drive or taken from YouTube. So I added here Edpuzzle's uh, LTI integration with Brightspace instructions on the link here at the bottom. So you can, so uh, your admins can uh, easily access and it's and follow the steps. It's the same thing as Paddle. So I'm going to switch now back to my uh, to Edpuzzle, and I'm going to create a video to start uh, where you can ask questions. And I selected a video from YouTube. So basically, you copy the uh, the YouTube link and you paste it here in Edpuzzle. And you click search and it's going to find the video so basically I, I i got a 20 second timer here so the video when you play your video and you can identify areas where you want to ask questions and you can uh, also uh, make it so that students have to watch the full video you can also cut videos here and all, and all of that but i'm not i'm just gonna skip that and i'm going to go to questions so if i select okay i'm gonna oh, so if I want to ask a question here, I can click open ended, ended question. Okay. How much time has elapsed? Uh, you can allow for audio answers or just written answers and you save. So it marks the video here for the first question. And then I can. Okay. And then multiple choice question. I can add how much time is left. Four, three, add another choice, two. And a fourth choice, one. And then this is the right answer. So I, I hit the right answer with the, the green check mark. And then I have included my question. So I have to save the question. Okay. And then that's my video. Okay. So. I have two questions in my video and I click finish and now I can toggle back to my course here and insert my video. Now, the difference between Padlet and Edpuzzle is you can't integrate the video as is uh, like, like an image or it can play right there, but you, you can in integrate the link. So I'm going to edit this area here. And I'm going to add my video. I have my instructions already written down. And I'm going to add a quick, a quick link. I'm going to find my third party. So you have uh, Edpuzzle here and Padlet's there. So this is where you would just insert a, a link to a Padlet. It's the same thing for Edpuzzle. And now it opens my Edpuzzle account, which is linked now. And I have my content. So I can go down. And this is the, the video I just edited and just added the question. So I'm gonna select this one. By selecting this one, I have now uh, made sure that this is the video I want and I'm gonna click next. And here is where you can determine what uh, some of the details of the video and what you want the students to do. So you can, uh, you can have more than one attempt. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it at one now. This is the important one though. You can prevent skipping, and you have so that this makes makes it so that the student will have to watch the full video, and also you can turn on the closed captioning, so that's also very important. 
uh, and then I want to assign it. And it's going to assign it and assign it to a class that I created in this specific course. So you have Edpuzzle, 20 second timer with music, which is there, save and close. So the link's there and the student can access that link and answer the question. So I will impersonate the student here, a student, I'm gonna take this guy and we'll access content. Module one, which is where the video was uh, inserted. So now you can see videos here. And when the student clicks on the link, the video opens up in Edpuzzle. And now the student hits play and it's going to stop. You can see where the questions are here on the uh, uh, time bar. So I'm going to hit play and let it go. And now it stops at the first question. The student has to answer to keep going. We submit. And then video. Now a second question. I'm gonna give a wrong answer here just to show you. Hit submit. Now, it's not the right answer. It shows the student the right answer. And then hit continue. And then the video. And let it finish. And that's it. The student submits. And it goes into the stats in the course stats. Back here as a teacher, I will show you what it looks like in Edpuzzle. First of all, the integration makes it possible to add an icon to your nav bar, which makes it easier for you as a teacher to access your Edpuzzle account that's uh, linked to this course. So I'm gonna hit Edpuzzle here. And you'll see the video I have added is in the list of video. The assignments are in progress. I only have one here, this is the one I added. But you can basically click the, uh, hit the video here and you'll see who has accessed the video, watched some of it. This student had has watched 60% while this one, which is the one we just did, has watched 100% in one attempt. Uh, and this one has been submitted, the last one, while the first one has not been submitted. It, you can't submit it because he hasn't watched it uh, completely. And then you can access the questions and see what the, uh, the students have answered. So uh, you can see zero of two, out of two right, et cetera. This one is an open-ended, so there's no right answer, obviously, but this one, a multiple choice, uh, if the student had answered correctly, then it would show that. So, and then uh, if I go back to, to Edpuzzle page in the platform, then you can see class members and who are the class members that have access to video. And then you can see the gradebook. And in gradebook, if you have more, more, more and more videos, then you'll have all these results. Uh, total time spent 26 seconds, while this one had uh, 18 seconds. And then here, this is the results of the questions and the attempt. So it's you get all the information from that video, from each video watched, from each student that are in your class list. So it's, and, and you can see in class list, I have three students and only two have access, accessed it. So you only see these two. As soon as the other one will access the video and watch it, then his name will be added to the gradebook. So basically uh, this uh, LTI integration of Edpuzzle makes it a lot easier uh, for teachers to track students that have watched videos and results of the questions. So it's uh, very helpful and makes it much easier and to, to, to track student progress. All in all, this is what we had in store for you today. We talked about release conditions, custom widgets using Genially, and LTI integrations with Padlet and Edpuzzle. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. There is a no return policy, but customer service is our mantra. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day.